We must look to the past to see how far the human body, mind, and culture has evolved. The story winds through millions of years, most of which are shrouded in mystery. Historians look back a few thousand years to the dawn of writing and recorded history. Archaeologists peer a little far back, digging through the litter of ancient civilizations and uncovering the dead. About six million years ago, Africa's forests were home to an ape that probably looked quite similar to a chimpanzee. Like a chimp, it was an agile climber and spent a lot of time in the trees, but could perhaps take a few steps on two feet. It may also have mastered a few tools. By approximately 5 million years ago, the species has split into two. One group stayed in a tropical African forest, giving rise to the chimp and its close cousin, the bonobo. The other adapted to life on land, gradually starting to walk upright and spreading to the savanna. This ground dweller was the first member of a branch of the ape family that has been traditionally known as hominids a group that ultimately came to include ourselves. However, classifications are also being amended to refer to all great apes as hominids. As a result, our ancestors from after the time of the split with the chimp line are now frequently termed hominins. Here, the term hominid will continue to be used when referring specifically to our walking ancestors and not to the other great apes. Paleontologists have now laid rest to the theory that big brains were responsible for driving us to walk upright in order to leave our hands free for making tools. In fact, our ancestors were walking on two feet by six to seven million years ago when their brains were no bigger than those of chimps. Even after their brains expanded, our ancestors continued to spend millennium hammering the same cruel tools with little sign of intelligence. The full impact of the human brain did not make itself apparent until around 40,000 years ago. By this time, however, a large amount of history was behind us. Many years ago, scientists saw each species as an ancestor of our own. It seems logical to organize them in a linear sequence, each one slightly more human than the last. With the discovery of more fossils, a very different picture has emerged. Human evolution looks like a bush made up of a maze of dead ends called clades and working out how all the species relate to each other is very difficult. One of the most sobering discoveries is that our story is one of failure and extinction. All of our ancestors' contemporaries perished, leaving Homo sapiens the sole survivor. Evidence indicates that our species very nearly met the same fate when population crashes significantly reduced its numbers. Fossils reveal that our cousins survived until as recently as 30,000 years ago and that small pockets may in fact have clung on even longer. A traditional reason for why we evolved large brains focuses on technology. Perhaps they evolved to help us devise complex weapons. With these, we unlocked a valuable new source of food, which is meat. Meat provided the protein and calories that make our brains even bigger. Yet perhaps stone tools dominate our thinking simply because so many examples have been found. The probable benefit of big brains for complex language and social behavior. Recently, the role in social interaction and evolution has been given more emphasis. In human society, success depends on the ability to exploit a web of social relationships. This skill may have been just as important as the ability to sharpen a rock or throw a spear. Writing is the sacred text of our human history. Written language was initially used only to draw up transactions and contracts. Later, however, it began to be used to record sacred knowledge and mythology, and by the time of ancient Greece, it was being used to store and communicate knowledge for its own sake. This pure love of knowledge has continued to feature in intellectual movements, such as the Renaissance. This began in Italy in the fourth century and continued in Europe until around the middle of the 17th century. It was a time when action and reason started to challenge religious and contemplative life. The Renaissance was an era of exploration and discovery in every sense. 
It pushed back the boundaries of art, geography, music, science, and thought. Writing became the tool for recording and sharing new knowledge, be this scientific, artistic, or political. For most of history, groups of homo sapiens did not share knowledge. It was passed from one generation to the next or discovered anew. When groups met, it was often to fight, something humans seem predisposed to. As technology develops, this seemingly innate urge could actually prove to be a threat to humanity. The more we learn about the world, the more we seem to be capable of destroying it. Today we live in a global village of 7.3 billion people and rising. All of our knowledge is pooled. Many of us speak the same language and every major town is connected to the internet. The cultures that once divided us may be breaking down and merging. If the past has anything to go by, society will continue to change at breakneck speed. Only time will tell where this will take us.